In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about determinants. Now, I'm going to give a concrete example of how we find a, a determinant and talk about their properties. And in this example, I'm only going to talk about two by two matrices. I'm going to make a separate video going through how to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, since it will take up a lot of space and quite a bit of time. So briefly, the determinant is a function that is performed on a matrix and it comes up in linear algebra in a few situations. So I'm not going to here talk about mathematical interpretations of what the determinant is. I just really want to focus on how one does it because we'll need to do it when we're calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So for us in quantum mechanics, it's normally going to just be a mathematical tool that we do, and we don't really need to think about what it means. And it has some helpful properties that I'll start with. So if we have a matrix A that is multiplied by a scalar K, and we know that, so for instance, this is three multiplied by every um, element in our matrix, we can simplify this by knowing that the determinant is going to be equal to the determinant of A, the matrix, multiplied by k to the n, where n is the dimensionality of A. So for instance, maybe it's a 2 by 2 matrix, so n is then 2. If we have two matrices that are multiplied together and we want to find their determinant, it's the product. So multiply the determinant of one by the determinant of another. This is quite helpful in quantum mechanics because we're going to have situations where we want to apply two operators and each operator is a matrix. And then we want to learn something about what has happened when we've done that. So again, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So in this case, we have some operator that's actually the product of two. And then we can find out about its eigenvalues and eigenvectors relating to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of each one. So this is something we'll actually see in quantum mechanics. Lastly, this is also quite important, is that if the determinant is not equal to zero, that tells us that A is an invertible matrix. Now how we write the inverse of A is A exponent negative one, just as you would write the inverse of two or something. And the definition is that a matrix A multiplied by its inverse gives you the identity matrix. So this is very similar to numbers. The inverse of two is one half. Two times one half is one. But now this isn't one scalar, it's also a matrix itself. So zeros on every element that is not on the diagonal and all of the diagonal elements being one. So we'll see the inverse come up in quantum mechanics. So these are the properties. Now I want to go through how to calculate it. And of course, you may have seen this if you've had linear algebra, possibly you've seen it in other classes. Maybe you have some different technique of calculating determinants, um, but, but I do warn you that sometimes students will say, oh, I have a different technique and, and it's wrong. So do make sure if you think you have a different way of calculating a determinant that it is actually a correct method. There's three different notations you might see. Um, I might use them or you might find them in other places. So det, writing out DET, and then the matrix is, is one method. I think it's the most clear, especially if this is new to you. A second form is just putting the matrix between two bars. So that looks like calculating the magnitude of the matrix, but in this case, it's the determinant. Maybe you write the matrix itself between two bars. So be careful. I have a tendency to always use these you know, curvy parentheses rather than writing just the matrix this way because I'm going to interpret this as determinant. So let's actually do this. So a method for calculating the determinant of A, in this case, and I've used variables just to make it clear, you first multiply this diagonal and then you subtract this diagonal. So what that means is A times D minus C times B. I've left it written in this order, but since these are scalar entries, you can flip that. So that's it. That's the determinant. Each one of these is a scalar, and so you multiply this out. And that would give you your value. Now, obviously, if you have a bigger matrix, we can't just use this technique. So in a separate video, I'll talk about how we can calculate the determinant of three by three matrices. And there are some other techniques using some more advanced notation, um, but I'll be using uh, this technique. So hope this is a helpful introduction or review. Look for another video. Um, for bigger matrices.